You're watching Vancouver TV, where we show you what's happening in your city. We've got the latest movie reviews and access to your favorite celebs. From fashion to red carpets, live shows, and more, we cover it all, keeping you informed about your city and in the know about upcoming events. Halloween around here. I don't think this place is giving out candy. <laughs> Haunted Halloween. Miss me? You discovered a walking, talking dummy and you didn't tell me? Okay, well, he seemed like a really nice guy at the start. They're moving. So tiny and cute, what can they possibly do? Sonny, they're just gummy bears. To win tickets to see this movie and other fun movie price packs, visit www.vancouvertelevision.ca. The biggest esports tournament in the world is here at Rogers Arena. Teams, casters, and fans from all over the world, including Russia, China, Finland, and the Philippines, are here looking to see who is going to come out on top. The prize pool sits at 25 million US dollars, and the winning team goes home with 11.1 million dollars. Let's go find out what's happening here at the International Dota 2 Championship here at Rogers Arena. I'm here with Shiver, who's the Dota 2 host here in Vancouver for TI8. How are you? I'm doing really great. You're doing a wonderful job out there. How does it feel to be a Dota 2 host? Uh, it's, it's amazing. There's a lot of energy here in this arena, and it's just, it's, I love my job, so it's great. Yeah, are you a Dota 2 player yourself? Yes, I play probably too much Dota 2, but I play a lot of it, yes. Wonderful. So for our viewers at home who don't know what Dota 2 is, could you explain to them what it is? All right, it's uh, five versus five, and there's two portions to the game. One is a draft where people select their heroes. There's a pool of 115, and you kind of can see that as a sort of advanced rock, paper, scissors. There's always <laughs> something that counters something else. Uh, and once the heroes are selected, five for each, uh, the players will play and it's destroy the base of the opponent, which sounds fairly simple, but in reality it comes down to strategic decisions that you have to make in a split second. And those split second decisions decide if you're playing for 11 million or if you're playing for, you know, just for your grandparents that cheer you on. <laughs> That's right. Have so, you been a pro Dota player yourself? Oh, I wish. No, I have not. <laughs> I'm not good enough for that. Well, you're here casting. Can you tell us how you got into casting? Uh, it was kind of a, a hobby, kind of grown out of control. Uh, so I, I already played Dota 2 and I thought I was going to go into event organizing. Uh, not, not specifically gaming, but just events in general. And I figured, you know, I should get some experience organizing some amateur events and figured, okay, well, can, I can do Dota 2 tournaments. And I helped out as an admin. <clears throat> Wanted to get some extra exposure for, for that tournament that we did. And you can already broadcast things live online. Like you don't actually need anything, you need a computer. That's it. And if your computer is good enough, you can broadcast anything you want online. And 
that's basically what I did. And we started talking, me and another admin started talking about the games that we were watching. And that's kind of how I got into commentating. And from commentating, it, it just grew. It just grew very fast. It just grew, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now you're here. How did that take you from those amateur days to this very professional stage? Rogers Arena is a pretty big deal here in Vancouver. Yeah, it was uh, definitely not overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I started uh, commentating in 2012. And it has taken me a while before I actually was at the level that I could actually do this professionally. And it, it obviously it involves a little bit of luck. It uh, goes for everybody that is in this industry. Uh, but it also invo involves, I had a lot of hard work and luckily I had time and resources to be able to put in that hard work without reward before the reward started uh, rolling in. So uh, a lot of hard work and dedication, I guess. Yeah. Most definitely and a beautiful personality. I can see that in oh. you. So congratulations on that. My question for you too is in regards to casting. I know it's not all glitz and glam. Can you tell us about the challenges as being a caster? Um, well, as I said, there's a lot of hard work and obviously for me it worked out great. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of commentators out there as well that are still working very hard and uh, might never see uh, a grand stage like this. And I think that is the biggest one. You, you, gotta, you gotta really love it. If you don't love it, you probably don't want to put in the effort because you don't know if you're going to be successful. It's not a, a career choice. Like you can't say, okay, I'm going to be a commentator. This is great. but. If you're going to make it and if you're actually going to be able to make a job out of it, that's a, that's a different thing altogether. And uh, I think that is probably the biggest challenge. Right, and I know you had a personal hurdle when it came to this. When you were um, rising to this wonderful platform of casting and then something personal happened, can you tell us and tell our viewers at home about this? Sure. Um, last year, May 2017, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And obviously that is a, that is a big deal. And I thought my, my world was crumbling. I was very, very lucky to have the Dota 2 community and the esports community basically rally around me and being super supportive and like incredibly supportive. You have no idea. It's uh, it's been it's been quite a journey. I am very happy to to have come out on almost the opposite side. I mean, I've gone through all the treatments, had chemotherapy, had a mastectomy, had radiation therapy, and we'll get a new breast in coming December. <laughs> But there are so many good things to come off of it as well, which is something that I was not expecting at all. Like that has been, it's been, it's been quite the journey. Yeah, and it's so wonderful that the Dota 2 community has come together and really brought your spirits up. Because I know yeah. cancer is a very difficult thing to talk about. And I commend you for your bravery and taking your story and bringing it forward and enlightening not just Rogers Arena, but the whole world. It's, uh, it's, it's a little odd because it is indeed a thing that people don't often talk about, but most people have someone in their family or friends or distant relatives, someone that, that has someone that has suffered from cancer, be that with a happy ending, but more often than not, there are sad endings involved there. And for some reason, people just ignore it. And it's not, it's not even just cancer. There's a lot of sicknesses and illnesses that people don't know even exist that people suffer from. And people just, you know, they, they, they put it away. Nobody talks about it. And it can be so helpful, as I ex have experienced, for, for someone to just say, like, hey, you know, I'm thinking of you. Doesn't even have to be anything else. Just a couple words, like three words of support, and it makes a difference. And I am really happy that even though experience, it has brought a positive to the whole thing, which, yeah, it's crazy. So inspiring that you're able to just come out of that very dark time and you're here today telling everyone your story inspiring them to persevere yeah. so as a caster moving forward into this dota 2 <laughs> tournament with all this perseverance and courageous yes. <laughs> intention what are your goals um so my perspective has kind of changed <laughs> over the last year um i i actually i think i've also grown as a as a host uh, i am less competitive which is actually you know I still have the competitive drive to be better and be the best you know do the best I that I can do. part of being a Dota player. <laughs> yes this is definitely <laughs> true uh, but at the same time my goal is to help other people shine and I think that is why I'm, I'm a good host so that I can have people on the panel that shine or talk about the stories that the players have because every single player that is here and especially the ones that are still in the tournament at the moment have each and every one of them have worked so hard to get here and even if they, for example, lose, 
their story is still a good one to tell and if they win obviously even more so uh, but that is that is my goal I, I hope to be able to tell people's stories for a long time to come and for now it's Dota 2 stories but who knows what's coming next I'm sure something big is for you right around the corner thank you so much for your time you. and good luck with the rest of the tournament thank you very much so not only do we have players and managers that flew in from all over the world, we have casters from the Philippines. How are you guys? Uh, we're doing good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Awesome. Can you tell everyone your name and where we can find you? Um, my name is Aldrin Paolo Pangan and I'm a caster for Mineski TV. My channel is twitch.tv slash bossduno. And you are? I'm Marlon Marcelo, and uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Great. Alright, so I understand that you two are Dota 2 fanatics, yeah? Uh, we've been actually playing the game, casting the game since uh, its early stages. Yeah, how long ago was that? Too long! <laughs> Maybe 11 years. 11 years! No, 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 no. 10 years. 10 years, and same for you? Yeah, pretty much the same. So how do you like casting for this game? I mean, it's our passion and uh, we're fortunate enough to be invited here with uh, my partner Duno and uh, with the Philippine crew. Very much excited because almost every year we cover it for uh, the Philippines and uh, the Filipino fans actually have a lot of viewership back in the Philippines. That's right. And I understand that Dota 2 is really popular in the Philippines. In Vancouver, we have a lot of Filipinos here. So have you been including able including you? Including me, yes. So have you been able to tour Vancouver a little bit? Um we just arrived like four days ago, but we had uh, a lot of time going around uh, exploring especially the nightlife. I actually went on a secret mission, but uh, people shouldn't know that I went skydiving. You went skydiving? Where did you go skydiving? I forgot the place, but it's uh, Skydive Vancouver. Wow, and what did you think of the smoke that you went through? We have a lot of wildfires right now. Actually, I didn't think about the smoke. I just uh, think about my parachute won't open. So that's my uh, first concern, but everything is uh, good. I'm here, I'm alive, so this is my new life, uh, my second life. Second life, here to cast Dota 2 at the international stage, yes. And how about you? Were you able to see Vancouver? Yes, just a bit. I was uh, busy on the production side, so he was skydiving while I was working. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a trade in there somewhere, right? Yeah. So can you tell our viewers at home how you got into casting and why you got into casting? Actually, it's not a plan that you become a caster. I actually loved playing the game before, but uh, there's this one tournament that they need to actually a caster so I just volunteered and from then on I've been doing a lot of local events and suddenly I did international events as well and here I am still doing it this are. is my this is my passion actually your passion yeah and I know you guys are really good at it and how about you what's your story I mean pretty much when uh, the esports scene in the Philippines was starting uh, I was I think I was the first one to actually cast on an event wow. Not really, I mean on Dora. And then uh, I saw Duno after my partner le left. He was the one to actually help me out. So we were like teamed like the most explosive duo in the Philippines when we cast because we have a lot of uh, things that we actually impart to our audience and uh, they, they really like us. So I started casting like around eight years ago and pretty much it's very different with no support, no coverage. It's just on site me and just my uh, megaphone. Megaphone? Yeah, I used to cast with my me megaphone. So yeah, it's very rewarding that uh, I see we, we can be seen at the the biggest stage of uh, oh, TI. Yeah. Biggest yeah. Tournament. yeah. The biggest tournament in the world. Esports, definitely. So my final question to you guys is... Who do you think is going to win this championship? Um, actually, it's very difficult because every every team is really good. Um, I think the heavy favorite to win the tournament will still be the defending champion Liquid. Beardless Bro is there as well. Uh, but my personal favorite will be LGD from China. How about you? 
I think I'm the same. Uh, last year's champion, uh, Team Liquid, but uh, I still my my favorite team. My heart goes to Mineski, so I think it's either Mineski or Liquid. You guys heard it from the casters all the way from the Philippines, so we'll check them out again at Rogers Arena. Thanks, everyone. So these two gentlemen flew all the way from England and the USA. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Wonderful. What are your names and what are you doing here? So my name is Luis Gomez and I'm here covering TI8 here in Vancouver, British Columbia at the Rogers Arena. Uh, I'm doing work for Rival, which is a betting company. We're covering the event and doing videos and stuff. Wonderful. So your experience here in Vancouver thus far? It's been amazing. Uh, I've never been to Canada before, so just been enjoying everything that I can, the food, the culture, everything. Yeah, so how's this TI8 experience thus far? Uh, I've been to TI once in Seattle, like four years ago, and this time here I feel like uh, there's something in the air, like everyone's more talking with each other. It's just like a very friendly attitude. Everyone's been very nice, yeah. Yeah, anything interesting going on in this arena right now? Uh, right now we're gonna be like coming up on a Chinese match. It's the last Chinese team remaining. The fans, this is their team, it's LGD. They love this team. I've talked to these guys for like years. They always tell me, yeah, dude, LGD, LGD. We need maybe, maybe Somnus God to carry the c whole country. And you're gonna be hearing some amazing like roars. Then after that, we had like this dramatic match between like ex-friends, now rivals. It's gonna be uh, an electrifying like place to be tonight at the arena. Yeah, ex-friends, can you elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, okay, so there was uh, two friends who'd been together for four or five years and they were supposed to go to TI together, but one of them decided that he would have a better deal going with another team and he left his friend behind. But his friend managed to make it here and now those two teams are going to face each other. And that, that is the fa that's going to be a hype match for every fan. I think that's why most people are here today. So that's in the back of the minds of a lot of people in the crowd. Uh, yes, that's just like whether success or, you know, money or friendship, which one is more valuable? Will friendship win or not? So that's money awesome. or friendship. And these two teams are? So EG is the one that the player moved to and OG is the old team. So it's interesting to see which of the crowd will support. Yeah, that'll be really interesting, especially in Vancouver, Canada, where we're not so dramatic, I would say. Yeah. What is your experience thus far in Vancouver? Uh, I did a lot of things in Vancouver. I thought the I did like a bike ride. I did other stuff, yeah, which is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite international. I would never come to Canada if TI hadn't been here. So I'm happy that TI was here. Yeah. And now I know that Vancouver is a great place, and I probably want to visit again. Yeah, welcome to Vancouver. Okay, so in comparison to TI8, oh sorry, TI7 and uh, TI8, I was you went TI4. oh you went TI4. Okay, comparison between TI4 and TI8. I think the level of play is just so much stronger. Uh, there's only been one series that went to three games. Everything else has been a two, easy, quick 2-0. It's kind of remarkable to see how well these teams are playing. The teams that are favored to win are pulling all the stops. The ones that are like scrappy underdogs are surprising everyone, right? So now it's just a culmination of the last top eight teams. And it's just gonna be some of the best Dota to be ever watched, probably in the last two years. Great. So I know a lot of our viewers at home don't know much about Dota, or what Dota is in, in particular. Can you elaborate on what Dota is? Um, so it's a team game which has a very complicated list. There's a hundred different heroes you have to learn. They each have four abilities. That's already 400 abilities. You need to know how long they last. You need to know what they do. And these players have to make split decisions instantly and many decisions at a time. Some of them could be fatal for their team. So it's very stressful, very fast paced and very high. I talked to Raven from TNC and he described Dota as basketball and chess. Do you agree? Sort of, yeah. Um, it's basically, you have, it, to expand on that, it's the speed of basketball, the intensity of basketball, but with the strategic mind of like a chess. Um, split second decisions are very like, just like in basketball, right? A split second decision could like get you in the lead and pull ahead or the wrong decision could get you back, right? So it, it is like chess in that way. Like these players are thinking about these decisions every minute of the game. As games go longer, the stakes get higher. Uh, any mistake can lose a game. And when you're playing for this much money, it's everything in the world for these guys. Great. And now to our viewers at home, do you have any advice for those looking to become pro Dota players? 
um, find some friends you'd like to play with and make a team. And I think that's really the best way to get into it with friends, I think. I would say that. But you just find, find a new game if you're sick of Fortnite, which you probably are by now. Just play Dota 2. So standing beside me here is Eugene, who flew all the way from Russia. He's an editor for Pro Dota. Can you tell us about yourself, Eugene? Uh, hey guys, uh, I'm a sports journalist from Russia, originally working in Zenit Basketball Club, but esports is my big hobby. So I, here, I came here to the International 8 as an editor for like a, one of the largest community and website uh, in Russian language world. Pro.ru to make some video blogs, they're horrible actually, um, and just have fun and feel the hype. Great. How popular is Dota in Russia? Um, Dota is uh, like the most popular kind of eSports in Russia. The community is the biggest and actually like 70-80% of eSports in Russia is Dota. Is this your first time in Canada? Uh, yes, it's my first time in Canada and I'm enjoying it so much. Great. Welcome to Vancouver. Yeah, we have so many different cultures here, so it's really wonderful that we're talking to you flew all the way from Russia. So is this your first TI experience? Oh, this is my second TI, but uh, the first was uh, last year in Seattle. So that's cool that I was in Seattle and now the other city. Great. And in comparison to the Seattle experience of, of TI and here in Vancouver, what are the, what are the comparisons, pros and cons? Um, I don't know. The TI itself is pretty much the same. So, and uh, I will know if everything, I don't know, different or the same in the final days when the place must be crowded. Uh, and so we will see. Uh, is the uh, local people are like more passionate about Dota or maybe even less and the organization is quite the same but maybe Valve did some good uh, production stuff this year like even better than last year. Yeah I was actually surprised to see so many people in the crowd cheering for all these teams because we don't have a Canadian team. So it's wonderful that everyone is still here cheering for the whole world, the different cultures, the different teams. Now, can you tell us who the Russian teams are here? Uh, Russian teams here are Winstrike, sadly they are already eliminated. But uh, by the way, we don't say like uh, Russian teams, we say like CIS teams or maybe Russian language teams because uh, there is no like Russian teams or Ukrainian teams or Belarusian teams or something like this. People, people like, who speak Russian are uh, playing together no matter the flag or nation. So the first one is Winstrike, uh, kind, kind of new team but with some old school players, with some new school players. And they were the dark horses of the event and took their 9 to 12 places. This is a quite okay result for them, like nobody expected them to have more. And Virtus Pro is uh, treated to be uh, the best team this season so far. Like everyone thought they will like stomp the upper bracket, but they're in the lower now, struggling. And but I hope they will be okay and get at least to the lower bracket final to get to the top three at least. So I'm here with the manager of team TNC who flew all the way from the Philippines. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Great, so welcome to Vancouver. How do you think of the city? Uh, we haven't really been going around. Like We just stayed in the hotel for like since we, since we arrived here. So it's just pure tournament for us. Now that's commitment, not seeing the beautiful city, but really eyes on the prize. So how does it feel to be the manager of Team TNC? I mean, oh, we, I have been with the boys like maybe for two, three years now. So like it, I think that it's really uh, pressuring for one because like I think that we are the most popular Filipino team, at least for, for Dota 2. So like I, I need to keep up with the, the boys because like they're running all over doing interviews practice here tournament there so i have to like provide everything that they need right. so how much pressure is it on you being the manager of this very professional and probably one of the most popular teams in the philippines um like it's 
it's, it's okay but i need to provide i need to make sure that uh they would they can focus on the game not focus on not be distracted by other factors let's say getting a visa fixing the tournament schedule looking for practice matches so like it, basically i do everything for them and so that they can play that's so you're it. kind of the kuya or big brother of yes. the group yes yeah. that's right uh, so how do you feel about the championship coming out for your team? I mean, we have been here for three years, so like, it's not really new to us. But this year, even though we're starting in the lower brackets, uh, eyes on the prize, like you said, like we want to win it all. So, yeah. You feel very confident about going into this tournament? Yes. Yeah. So what is some advice that you can give to other aspiring Dota players out there? Well, of course, studies first. Like, this is not a career that, you know, everyone is entitled or, like, everyone can be successful. So, like, you need to gauge first, like, what's what's your chances of being successful in this career. But if you do feel that you have the skills and the dedication, the passion and everything, like, you should go for it. And what do you feel is TNC's inspiration? I think it's just, majority of it is for the country. Like, uh, I think, unlike other uh, sport athletes like Manny Pacquiao and the other popular, like the Gilas basketball team, like, we, we really want to give glory to the country. So, that's one reason why we are doing this. That's fabulous. Well, all the best to you and Team TNC.